Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in automation and I have a very brief video for you, hopefully brief, uh, which is giving you a quick start guide to uh, the campaign in the open alpha of Milestone version 4.2, light campaign v4.2. Alright, let's get going. Of course, first things first, all the... All the text are <laughs> a little old, as you can see, 4.0, 4.1, it's very mixed, but it's mostly working. Tutorial video is from 4.0, so uh, take that with a grain of salt as well. This is why I'm making this one. Um, if you are playing this for the first time, then I certainly would recommend choosing either Gesmia or Hetvesia. Those are the easiest two starting countries. Middle of the pack would be Ferenia and quite difficult to very difficult are both Ahana and Dalua. Although if you survive the early phase, they come with nice advantages of low taxes um, towards the later portion of the game. Set up your difficulty here, or you can indeed also go into the advanced menu and uh, tailor those settings to your liking. The very first thing the game asks you to do is to start a new car project, and that is indeed what you need to do first. What is advisable at the start is to go into more niche categories that have higher margins on average. For instance, the luxury segment or the sports car segment if you are starting a game at a later date. In 1946, there is not much of a sports car market. So, if you want to start with a small factory, uh, then I would recommend you start with the luxury segment. So you click the luxury demographic there and then you either build the car from scratch or let the AI generate a base car for you and uh, go from there. I assume that you know exactly how to design cars, even the older ones, so I'm not going to go through that. So I've let the AI make a car and it has resulted in something uh, rather questionable but somewhat decent for the luxury segment. Very important is that you check this very tab. It is the testing tab, the marketing, the markets mode. In that one, you see how many cars you're going to sell at a certain price, which you can choose freely. That is new in this version. So if we were to sell it for 25,000, we would be selling around 88 cars. And let's say we make the ridiculous uh, 15, uh, 15 k price you see how much we are spreading into other markets as well. This is considering your current um, awareness of 3%. Another thing that is very much advisable to do is to get back out of here and please also use the project map to do so. Back to the car project designer and we are going to um, clone this one and make a different variant that is covering slightly different markets. So we clone the car there and, uh, for instance, make a convertible. You edit the car, choose another body type and modify it, of course, unlike myself here right now. And you see that we now have a little bit of a different coverage um, for that. Of course, with uh, cars priced so highly, you will rarely see the difference. But here it is becoming pretty apparent. The um, Convertible is going more into the convertible segments, while the luxury is going more into the standard segments. The blue bar shows the unique market share this trim is grabbing, while the um, dark part of the bar is showing you the overlapping market share. Please consider that it is not advisable to have more than three trims in a small factory, which very likely is what you're going to start out with. Once you have everything set up, and you have considered those markets that we just spoke about, you are going to advance from here towards the engineering setup. You get 36 months off your first engineering project, so that is helpful, but especially for cars that are low production volume, you probably want to drag down the tooling slider, just as a hint, that gives you a lot of time savings. If you have a start with a little bit more money, you can also easily just crank up that funding level. And now we come to the engine. Basically, what's happening now is that we need to set up the, um, the engine engineering as well as the factory for it. 
And what you now should be taking a look at is the car project's engineering time, which is listed up here. And you likely will want to match this with the uh, engineering time that you're going to set for the engine. Only whole months count. So 13.0 would be counted as 13 and 13.2 would actually count as 14. So that's not too good a choice there. Depending on your starting conditions, you don't have or you do have an engine factory. If you don't have an engine factory, you will get to this empty screen and you will have to create a new factory. You can choose between making a contract factory that is one that you don't actually own, you just contract it out for like twice the material costs, or you build your own small factory. Consider buying a larger plot than you need if you have the funds available. That will give you some leeway for later upgrades. In the factory you do see what kind of add-ons you need. Those are blinking there, need to be upgraded. I've chosen a contract factory, so that doesn't cost me anything. They have the equipment anyway. On the final tab of your factory setup, you um, do see the material costs, the labor costs, which are very high for contract factories. And uh, then you just need to confirm and you get going with the same thing after checking that everything is in order with the same thing for the car. We move forward to the factory management. This is now your car factory. We don't have a car factory, we have a plot. All right, so let's uh, choose a small one factory right there. And for the choices that they made, we actually need a damn expensive galvanization plant. Well, that wasn't too smart, Mr. AI. We make sure that both of our trims are being constructed in this factory. This graph shows you if you have enough engine production. If the blue line is below the yellow line, then you're all good. If it is above the yellow line, then you need to consider how hard you want to work the factory. Just make sure that you're not completely stressing out the engine factory. One thing to note is that the shift range actually matters for how much the um, labor costs. The labor costs you see in here, this is the production cost for one of these items. Keeping a wider range, of course, makes you more flexible, which also is advisable. Um, probably better to start off small and then later grow instead of the other way around. Worker wages and worker quality are important for both how quickly you gain staff. If you, oh, well, it's difficult to show here right now, but um, li like this, if you have no worker quality, then they are easy to get and your build quality is pretty, <coughs> yeah, let's not, let's not talk about that. Um, and uh, if worker quality is high, then it will take a while to get the, the stuff that is required for your production. In Gazmir, that is not much of a difficulty. Um, they, they are a quite capable workforce. Now that we have everything set up, you see the profit pie we have up here. If we are indeed selling these cars for like 35,000 a pop, then we have, what was it, 35,000 or even more? This looks like more in total. Um, yes, so 24,000 is your possible profit with the price that we set up there. If you do very much dislike recalls and destroying your reputation, then I would advise you to crank up the QA threshold a little bit. This is working this way. You see the um, production quality distribution curves up here for the different years of production. Your workforce will gain experience and thus become better over time. Um, but also you will degrade your tooling and thus it will come back down after a while again. So if you set the quality threshold there, the way it is, then these lower tails of the curve for the worst build quality are cut off and with that the chance for recalls. There is significant downside to it though, as you can see when you are um, changing this and there is a significant slowdown that comes from increasing the QA threshold. Now that the factory is set up, we can continue to the forecaster tour. This is looking um, not too bad and not too good either. We do start to see some green stuff down here, which is uh, what you want. But for your first project, usually you will have a hard time to break even. What you should be aiming for, though, is a quick facelift and then you should see green numbers after that. You can change your margin in percent 
like for instance 40% here and then the uh, calculations will run again and do so for every trim. You see the ratio of how many are built up there, how they are doing overall and uh, if that is actually a little too steep or not. The pre-production graph shows you how you're aligned timing-wise within this project. In this case, there's nothing really to comment on. Staff fills very quickly. The factory time is, uh, construction time is lower than the overall engineering time. So all is good. On here, you can decide what projects you want to synchronize so that they are being released at the same time. Right now, here we only have one. We can take out a loan at a uh, not so great uh, interest rate, um, or we can just deactivate it like this. When you feel ready to tackle this, sign off your selected projects. Now, a very important thing to not forget is to, uh, if you have the funds, both start research and development for the categories that you want to focus in. If you, for instance, want to focus in a luxury company, why not start with some interior quality or rather tech for there, which allows you to have cheaper quality as well. If you, on the other hand, for instance, want to go into the more family car market, maybe you want to focus on fuel system for some, um, for some nice efficiency there or maybe safety. Another super important thing to not forget right at the start is to do some marketing. This is all very red and we want to change this. We need to get these numbers of awareness up and that is best done by doing some marketing. We are right now building a luxury car so how about getting some additional awareness uh, in those markets. And you can see how this is influencing them right there. 0.7% per year growth and that is just from the marketing there. All right, um, then we could also add, for instance, drivability, which is a more general stat and thus will also cost you a little bit more. Now this is all set up and we can let the game start running. You see how your expenses and your income uh, changes over time. Get some nice interest payments there and some pre-orders coming in now. As you see there, we are already making 136K per month from just pre-orders. And there we have the big day, our first car is out. So, what do we do now? Uh, hope that our sales don't suck. Yes, that is exactly what we do. And uh, I usually let the first month tick so that we have an idea of how it goes. We do have about two months worth of production in pre-orders that we need to get rid of first. One thing that you should be doing really quickly, and that is the last thing that I'm going to show you, that gets you along the way and you're ready for trying things out yourself, is that you need to, at some point, uh, sooner rather than later, go back into the car projects, open one of your trims and create your first facelift. That is very easy to do. You just click the massive new facelift button. That will automatically activate your update to your existing trims and uh, well, you just rename them accordingly and then enter them and redesign them. Make sure that you don't make too massive changes because that will be costly in terms of engineering time. Facelifting works just like working on the original car, but you have a different starting point and that starting point obviously is your original car, which means that your original car, recreating that one without any changes will be very inexpensive in terms of time especially. So now is the time to actually increase a little bit those uh, tooling um, processes and all the other things that you skipped on before. That is true for any factory upgrades as well, but you need not to consider that you are missing out on production while those factory changes are ongoing. And there we go, we can sell it a little cheaper and I hope this is giving you a uh, just very quick glance at what the campaign is about. Of course, there's much, much more to it than this, but I think this gives you a nice starting point to uh, dip your toes into it. And I hope you enjoyed, and see you guys next time.